The next thing we are going to look at is modern, modern physics. So under modern physics, we are going to look at some key terms. One of them is thermionic emission. The word thermal, if I say thermal energy, I'm talking about heat energy. So to emit is to produce. So thermionic emission simply means a process by which electrons are emitted. A process by which electrons are emitted from a metal surface by heat. Now we all know that a metal is a good conduct of heat and the reason is it has free electrons, which means inside the metal we have free electrons. Now when you heat this metal, what happens to these electrons? What happens to the metal? The temperature of the metal increases. And as you keep on increasing the temperature, you are increasing the kinetic energy of vibration of the metal atoms. Uh, time is going to come whereby these electrons will leave the metal. As the heat continues, temperature continues, kinetic energy also increases. Time is going to come when this metal, when the electrons will leave the metal surface. And once they leave a metal surface, we call them electron clouds. But now the process by which those electrons are produced from a hot metal or from a metal surface by heating is what we call thermionic emission. The process by which electrons are produced from a metal surface by heating. So that is what we call thermionic emission. So if somebody says, define thermionic emission and he has awarded one mark, when you state it like this, you already get your mark. A process by which electrons are emitted from a metal surface because the electrons must leave the metal surface by heating, through heating. Okay, now let's go to another word, cathode rays. Cathode rays simply mean electrons, but these electrons should be moving at a very high speed. So electrons which are moving at a very high speed, we call them cathode rays. So when somebody says, define cathode rays, you say it is a stream of fast-moving electrons. Or you can say it is a stream of electrons moving at a high speed. If they are moving at a high speed, then they are fast-moving. So it is up to you to choose. Either you say it, has, it is a stream of electrons moving at a high speed, or you say it is a stream of fast-moving electrons. As simple as that. And the examiner has given one mark, and you get it. Now, what are the properties of cathode rays? We are saying cathode rays are a stream of fast-moving electrons, which means the cathode rays are electrons. And we all know that electrons are negatively charged. So one of the properties of cathode rays is that is it? they are negatively charged. So let us look at the properties. State the properties of cathode rays. The first one is they travel in straight lines. So cathode rays, tra cathode rays travel in straight lines. They are negatively charged. Remember, they are electrons, therefore they are negatively charged. They cause fluorescence. They cause certain materials to produce light. You see? They cause certain materials to produce what? Light. That process is what we call fluorescence. We shall look at that later. In details, they cause ionization of gas molecules. You see, ionization comes from the word to ionize. And to ionize comes from the word ions. We have only two types of ions, positive ions and negative ions. So when you pass cathode rays where there is a gas molecule, the cathode rays will make those gas molecules to have ions, to possess either positive charges or negative charges. That's what we call ionization. So they cause those gas molecules to ionize. Okay? They affect a photographic plate. You see? There's what we call a photographic plate. When you put it, it is like, uh, when you put it where cathode rays are passing, they will affect. Because they will be moving, remember we are saying they are fast-moving electrons. Fast-moving means they are able to move. Anything which moves, anything which is in motion, has a kinetic energy. So they possess kinetic energy and momentum. In physics, how do you calculate momentum? Momentum is, you get it by mass times velocity, you see? So if something is moving, then it has velocity. 
and if it has velocity it has momentum next they are deflected to the positive plate in an electric field if you have two plates one is positive another one is negative then you allow cathode rays to pass in between them because the cathode rays are negatively charged they are going to be attracted to the positive plate why because the positive and negative attract unlike charges attract so they are deflected deflected means they bend towards but we always like this word don't say they bend say they are deflected to the positive plate in an electric field what about if you bring if you bring what if you bring a magnetic field a magnetic field means you bring a south pole and a north pole supposing we had here a north pole then here you have a south pole then you allow this cathode rays to pass in the middle what happens they will also bend and because they bend which direction do they bend so we don't use the word bending we say they are deflected by magnetic fields for them they will be deflected towards the the south pole you see now all these are properties of cathode rays and therefore they are all correct the examiner has not stated how many he wants so if he says or she says state two you see he has said state properties if he says state two you pick any two among those ones and you will be correct where do you use cathode rays applications of cathode rays you see there are quite many but here the examiner wants one state one application of cathode rays and is one mark so cathode rays are used to produce x-rays when somebody have you ever had somebody uh, who could have gone for an x-ray examination in a hospital now we shall talk about that in details but for now those x-rays they are the, it is the now the cathode rays that help to produce. So cathode rays are used to produce X-rays. We shall talk about that. Now, before we look at how X-rays are produced, let us see how cathode rays are produced. Production of cathode rays. How are cathode rays produced? Uh, cathode rays are produced in an instrument called a cathode ray oscilloscope. Cathode rays are produced in a cathode ray oscilloscope the abbreviation is c r o cathode ray oscilloscope so the examiner says draw a well labeled diagram of a cathode ray oscilloscope he has given seven marks draw a well labeled diagram of a cathode ray oscilloscope so this is how a cathode ray oscilloscope looks like you see this thing this diagram it looks like a torch it looks like a torch but not exactly a torch now this side you have what we call the heater so when you are drawing it you draw it you see you first begin by the outside part which looks like a torch you see now this other extreme end this one we call it the fluorescent screen this is the fluorescent screen now inside here we don't need air so for that for that matter or for that reason it is a vacuum then this dotted parts those are electrons which are moving at a high speed and therefore you can call them you could as well call them cathode rays okay so starting from this side here we have the heater then next to the heater we have the cathode after the heater we have the cathode this is the cathode next to the cathode you have the grid this is the grid this one after the grid you come to the anodes these are the anodes then you come to the plates one is called the y plates the one which looks horizontal is actually the y plates somebody would think this is the x plate because it's a horizontal no these are the y plates the only ones which look vertical those are the x plates you see then after that you now go to the fluorescent 
fluorescent screen. So this part here, we call it the fluorescent screen. Then the dotted parts, as I said, those are electrons. So these are the major parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope. You have the heater, you have the cathode, uh, what else do you have? You have the heater, you have the cathode, you have the grid, you move to the anodes, you go to the Y plates, you go to the X plates, then you go to the fluorescent screen. Then don't forget electrons. You see those dots, they start from the cathode, which means electrons are produced from the cathode. So when these electrons are produced from the cathode, they pass through the grid, they go to the anodes, they go to the Y plates, they go to the X plates, and finally, they find themselves on the fluorescent screen. And we have said in this idea, there should be no air, so it is a vacuum. So we shall talk about each one. So what is the work of the heater? The work of the heater, because the heater is next to the cathode, it is work is to heat the cathode. Now, the cathode is a metal. Once the cathode is, is heated, electrons are going to be produced. Remember we said metals have electrons, free electrons. That's why they conduct heat and electricity. So when you heat a metal, what happens? At a higher temperature, those electrons are going to leave the metal surface. So when the heater heats the cathode, the cathode will produce electrons. And that process is what we call thermionic emission. That was the first definition we had. We said that thermionic emission is a process by which electrons are produced from a metal by heat. So when this cathode is heated, it produces electrons by a process called thermionic emission. What happens to these electrons? They now move to the grid. Now the grid, once they reach the grid, you see the spacing in the grid. The grid, first of all, is negative. So when the grid is negative, what happens? It will repel those electrons. Why does the grid repel the electrons? So that these electrons don't waste time around here. So all the electrons which will come this side, the grid will repel. So that all of them go through the space. So all the electrons must pass through the space here. When they try to go to the cathode, the cathode is also negative. When they try to go up the grid, the grid is also negative. So all of them are going to be forced to pass through this small space. Now, the size of that, the size of that space, the size of this space matters. If it is big enough, more electrons will be allowed. If it is small, then few electrons will be allowed. So once they now go to the anode, the anode is, in it is positive. Now the electrons are negative, so they will be attracted. The anode will attract them. So the work of the anode is to focus those electrons and then accelerate to increase their speed. And we said when electrons move at a high speed, you call them cathode rays. So from there, they go to the Y plates. The Y plates are going to deflect these electrons vertically. The X plates also deflect them horizontally until they go to the fluorescent screen. So briefly, this is how this machine works, you know? Okay, so now let's move to another level. Now, the heater, the cathode, the grid, and the anode, they have a general name. We call it electron gun. You see, from here up to here, they have a general name, electron gun. Then the plates, Y plates and the X plates, they also have a general name, deflecting system. And then the last one here is a fluorescent screen. So which means a cathode ray oscilloscope can be divided into three main parts. The three main parts are electron gun, the deflecting system, and the fluorescent screen. So, uh, let's move on. Name the major parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope. You see? Name the major parts. How many are, are those parts? Three. Name the three major parts of a cathode ray oscilloscope. Three marks. The first one is electron gun. The second one, deflecting system. The third one is the fluorescent screen. What makes up electron gun? It consists of the heater, it has the cathode, the control grid, and the anodes. Then what makes up the deflecting system? The plates, the Y plates, and the X plates. Then the fluorescent screen is alone. How does this machine work? Explain how a CRO, CRO means cathode ray oscilloscope, six marks. 
we start from the heater. The heater heats the cathode, so the cathode becomes hot. So the hot cathode emits electrons by thermionic emission, okay? Then the electrons go to the grid. The control grid repels electrons, concentrates them along the axis of the tube. Then they go to the anodes. The anodes focus and accelerate electrons into a fine beam to the Y plates, to the neighbors. Then the Y plates deflect electrons vertically, while the X plates deflect electrons horizontally. Then the electrons go to the screen. As electrons strike the fluorescent screen, a bright spot of light is produced.